Are we recording? <laughs> yeah, we're rolling. I'm sorry to jump in and tell you. Should I have consented no. to letting you record? No. No, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when you sneak up on me unannounced and just start recording, Tyler. <laughs> I don't know what this is, if this is Radio yo or The Goods, but uh, it's a collab episode. I was just thinking about that, but yeah, who cares? Just Either one. It. Do it both. Yeah, we could post it on both or whatever. I'm sure that there's not a lot of a bleed over. <laughs> there yeah. probably is. Probably. Oh, how's your week been, Jake? Good. I'm exhausted. I had a golf outing with my workplace today. Like so a we golf went, golf? Yeah, like ball golf. So Damn. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm really fucking tired because it takes like six hours to play ball golf. Did you walk? You didn't like? No, we had the cart. golf carts. Oh, word. It was legit, but I don't play it often, so I'm really sore and tired, and I probably sunburned. Did you get white boy wasted like all the other? No, I didn't drink at all. Off? Yeah. Have you ever seen that clip of a woman who's drinking like a huge beer on the golf course? She's obviously like a senior citizen, and it's like seven in the morning, and the woman recording is like, "Meryl, it's seven in the morning," and she's like, "I had to wash the Percocet down with something." <laughs> That's hilarious. No, I haven't seen that. It's a good. It's a good one. It's a good one. Is that the first time you've ever played golf before? It's like the second or third time. Okay. Um, but I liked it. It was a lot of fun. It's just I like disc golf a lot because it's free and it's in the woods. <laughs> yeah. And disc golf, I feel like, is the antithesis of actual golf. It really is, I mean? like socially, because there's camaraderie. The thing with ball golf is, if you want to play the best. With disc golf, if you want to play the best disc golf course in the world, it's technically this place, Maple Hill in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and you go there and you pay to play. Most courses are free. You do have to pay for the really nice ones, right? but you can go. The thing with ball golf is if you want to play the best course in the world or the country, you can't you get can't in. Get in. Can't. It, you just never will. You can't. And you never fucking will because you have to know someone or you have to be make a certain amount of money. Or you got to eat a baby in front of Bill yeah, Clinton. Yeah, like get you literally have to know like a president <laughs> for some of these spots. There's one in New Jersey that like multiple presidents have houses on the course, like former presidents. So like you're only, just never going to get you're just going to have to dream. Like, only I 11 love, middle schoolers have been murdered. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Who knows what's the nefarious buried, activity <laughs> buried in the sand traps, but <laughs> it's just like that to me is so if when I get into something, I get into it. Yeah, so yeah. I've already played the best disc golf courses in the country. That's like sick. I love, I get into it. So yeah, golf is weirdly expensive. If I get into golf, I'm not even going to get to be able to do that. Yeah. Like, it seems like such a bummer to me. I don't know. So I'm not getting into golf. And I feel like people who play golf like rarely have the time to actually like you said invest to get better at it yeah. so they just kind of like stay shitty their entire life and just continue to spend money on better equipment for like no justifiable right. reason it's very similar to yo-yo where people just like continue getting new shit for no reason and they're yeah. like oh just what i do and it's like i get it that's cool the older i get the more i i understand why old dudes enjoy the nothing activities like the fishing, the yeah, golf and fishing. Golf, golf is great. It, it, it was a beautiful <laughs> day. Like you get to, but the problem with golf too is the courses are so bad for the environment. They take up so much water and so much land. Mm, I didn't even think about that. Where it really point. is like a problem. Whereas yeah. disc golf courses work with the land always. Like there are some ball golf style disc golf courses that are just like rolling hills mm -hmm. and wide open shots, but. 99% of disc golf courses are in the woods. Right. Like you're among nature and you're working with nature. It's very low impact. So like it's a superior sport socially and then also environmentally. Like, and everyone's wearing those Vibram five fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just, everything's good, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, that's funny. Some everyone's of the guys just... at my work had the full, some were golfers. So they mm -hmm. had like, they brought their own clubs. They had the gloves on. They had the range finder going the range finder yeah it's like a thing you look through to see how far away okay something yeah, is. yeah, yeah. So you're like all right that's 300 yards i gotta hit nine iron for that one or whatever um but i just had a good time but i'm like exhausted so we're that doing sucks. a podcast so yeah well, you know <laughs> this one this i'm here i'm present I'm i always see up. a lot of people online flipping golf clubs like on at thrift stores and stuff because people yeah. just get rid of old ones and 
like I need to step my game up and learn more about them because I'm sure like I've seen so many yeah, and I'm probably just find like some sweet ones. Yeah. I always kind of want to get a set and then give it a try, but it's too much. Like you it's, said. Yeah. Just today, I think it was 30 bucks a person. Like it, it adds up if you want to play golf every week. Yeah. Like, that's wild. It's crazy. And you can't just play golf for six and hours. Like you got to eat while you're there. That's and the lower end. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We ate and like. And then the other thing, it, not to just keep going on about golf. <laughs> We've been talking for like five minutes about golf. <laughs> but the last thing I'll say is you have to have tea time. You have to pay and then you have to have tea time. So like your expected a pace of play is so much more important in ball golf versus disc golf. You can go out and you're basically hiking. Like you're on a hike and you're also playing a game versus ball golf. It's like there's people in front of you. There's people behind you. It's a business that you're at. Like you need to keep moving. Yeah, that makes me it, more surprised. More women don't play golf for that reason. <laughs> it's so organized. Oh and yeah, on a schedule all day, and everyone yells at one another that they got to keep moving. <laughs> a tempo, tempo, tempo. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. So uh, when you're with the boys, everything's supposed to be loose and free Chill. flow, and you're just drinking on the course. And yeah, I don't know. More women should play golf. Sure. All sports. Yeah. <laughs> Disc golf. Just play disc golf. It's better. More women That's playing the moral disc golf. of the story. But anyway. Um, I'm going to think can... of some topics. Yeah, you had some topics. I have some topics. I have a lot of topics, okay, but they're cool. all they're all random. Is uh, all right. When's the last time you went to the Chinese buffet? <laughs> when I, the night I moved into this house, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. My buddy helped me move in. You I guys went together? Yeah, okay. I closed on the house. And then we're like, what are we going to eat? We spent all day moving stuff in. And we went down the street to the Chinese buffet. I hadn't been to one since I was a little kid. Okay, so it had been a minute before that. A long that time, yeah. yeah. Years and years, probably 10 plus years. And it was How so, was it? It was how you expect. <laughs> like the food's not that good, you know what I mean? Oh, it's so bad. You I gotta haven't hit, been to you one. You got to know what time to hit those places yeah, when they exactly, do like yeah. the fresh food. So I just got like some sushi, vegetable sushi. I'm not getting meat sushi at the buffet. No way. Why did you even bother? Go? Did you eat seafood? Any other seafood? No, Crab legs? No seafood. No shrimp? I got, None? I stuck with the base, like chicken, sweet and sour chicken, like basically chicken Can't nuggets. Can't even imagine how long that was out yeah, there. Yeah. So they're chicken nuggets. <laughs> all so of it. All fine. of it's that way. And but then especially like the shit laced General Tso's chicken. In sugar. Yeah. Yeah. The sugar preserves it. So right. Exactly. Fine. Yeah. Um, it doesn't because I always stuck with viscous. like the very basics, but I ate a lot cause we were really hungry and it was a great deal. It was like 11 bucks for like as much as you can fucking eat. You yeah. Know? So like it is a great deal if you're very, very hungry and you just want to load up on pretty bad food. Right. Um, yeah. Well, we used to go all the time when I was a kid and then like I kind of tapped out when I'm in my older years or when I moved and started working at Yo-Yo Factory, there's just not as many out in Phoenix. Like, there's a lot of sushi and random stuff, which is funny to think about in <clears throat> the middle of the desert eating any kind of seafood or fish or anything. But uh, we're pretty close to L.A. It was like a five-hour drive to L.A. Um, but, uh, yeah, when I was a kid, we used to go all the time. And then when I moved back to the East Coast, I was like, oh, I'm going to go to a Chinese buffet. Like, I can't wait to go back. And yeah. I went and I, like, brought the girl I was dating at the time. She was like, what's the matter with you? She wasn't, like, being too bougie about it. But eventually it was just like, okay. Why are you like, so excited? Yeah, man? she's like, I cannot eat here. And then, like, when I ate a little bit, I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, I can't believe I <laughs> <laughs> suggested we go here at all. It was awful. That's so funny. Yeah, they're they're terrible. <clears throat> I mean, it's great when you're a kid and you have no standards, you know what I mean? But I'm sure there's good ones out there. But yeah, you have to really know which one has the enough popularity that the turnover's oh, really yeah. fast, you know? Did you ever go to a CC's Pizza when you were a kid? Yes. CC's Pizza, I really enjoyed. That honestly. hit for a minute when you were a kid, yeah. but nowadays it's not. I haven't been in I can't 15, imagine it years, holds but... up Yeah, as an adult, but as a kid, I thought that was pretty good trashy pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not like it's like it was like Pizza Hut level, which I still like Pizza Hut. I thought it was even worse though they've than gone that, really downhill. Yeah, you're right. It was a little worse. Do you ever get the Pizza Hut individual servings at Target? Yes, like I do. You know this. Too, I do. Yeah, yeah, big time. I didn't know it to be honest, uh, really? but I do all the time. I, I feel like them. I've told you about that. I haven't gotten one in like probably two years, Dude, but I'm very guilty because there's a Target right near my house, and it's so perfect. Like I don't I know what's good about it after like, work to like grab. 
some necessities I need, whatever, like a couple groceries. And then I'll just be like, it's, a good, it's like five bucks, right? It's not yeah, that five expensive. Bucks. I can just like, have this for dinner. I don't have to worry about it. Then. Yeah. Or it's just a great midday snack. It always gives me a stomach ache, no matter what. Yeah, though. it's not good. <laughs> it's just another thing. It's just not good. But I'm addicted to Pizza Hut because I just grew up on Pizza Hut. And it used to be, we it ate used like, to be a lot better because they would make the dough yeah. and actually bake the pizzas in pans. Do you remember now the Pizza Hut frozen. pans when you were a kid? They're like the Adidas sandals with the little bumps on the bottom. <laughs> pan? What were they? Like the pan. Did you ever go to a Pizza Hut and it, yeah. like, you got the black pan at your yeah, table yeah, and you, you cut it? it. Yeah, yeah. Like the bottom would have like all the little. Yeah. Like, right. It wasn't frilly because it's made out of like cast iron, but it was all the like little bumps so that the air yeah, kind of like flows right. through it and shit. Um, it, they would bring it out steaming yeah, in the right, pan. Yeah. Dude. It was a real pan pizza and they actually had the fresh dough there because my buddy worked there growing up. And he's like, yeah, you actually have to like stretch dough and make dough. But now it's all frozen doughs that they send in and put through a conveyor belt, just like Domino. So it's like no fresh dough anymore. It's just, it's really gone downhill, unfortunately. But. Yeah, it's a lot harder to put swastikas on the pizza when they're <laughs> frozen. Um, Out what of do you, pepperoni. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. do you think about, or green peppers if you're vegan, whatever yeah. kind of swastika you want to make, we don't discriminate. Right. Um, what do you think about businesses that, our old Pizza Huts that didn't change the roof on. I love that. <laughs> that's a, that's a great a, a good, piece of Americana there. It's there, a good sign. I, I wish if there's a, if anyone knows of a Chinese buffet that's in one of the Pizza yeah. Hut old buildings, we'll send us a there. photo. We're going to fly there we'll and record an episode. And we're going to hold the U.S. National Yo-Yo we contest. Could there. <laughs> <laughs> we could absolutely record in a Chinese buffet. Oh, yeah. They, they would, would not care. They wouldn't care. Yeah. We could do whatever laptop. you want in there. Yeah. Because you can be there all day because it's all you can eat. So. I'm surprised they didn't th I think of like a Chinese pizza or Chinese uh, buffet gate instead of pizza gate. Because yeah. that's really like it's maritime rules at a Chinese buffet. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm drinking Miller Lite and I'm also drinking <coughs> single malt Glen Morangy Scotch. So I, mean, I have like both ends of the alcohol spectrum. I have like high end. Oh, wow. And low end. Yeah. Yeah, you're going in right um, now. Like, yeah. I'm drinking uh, an Evil Lamp. Genius. I love Lamp. They always have these. They're from like uh, Philly. They're from Philly, yeah. yeah. They're like literally next door. Well, maybe like half a mile up uh, the street from where I did that pop-up front. But they always have these names for their beers. I guess it's just they're a name. Like pop culture references yeah, usually. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know. I Like, it's cool, but it Stacey's always makes me. Mom. Yeah, it's one of them. That makes me question how they haven't gotten in trouble for like right. their IP. You know what I mean? Because all these companies, I feel like, are very you know litigious about this kind of shit. Yeah, but. it's funny. <sighs> Who knows? So when when's the last time you went to an actual Pizza Hut restaurant? It's been like over <laughs> like a sit down. Years. Yeah. We used to go when we went to Dutch Wonderland. That was my the yearly trip that my grandparents would take all their grandkids nice. on to Dutch Wonderland. And there's a Pizza Hut maybe 20 minutes away from that on the way back home. We had one that I actually passed when I go to the Anodizer where we get our yo yo's nickel oh. plated. <laughs> well, do you remember what town it's in? It's in Lancaster. Lancaster Pizza yeah. Hut. Okay. It might be just outside of Lancaster, the Pizza Hut, or it yeah. might be out of business by now. I meant I drive by Dutch that's Wonderland. Where Dutch Wonderland yeah. is Lancaster. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, there was one near our house near where I live now and it's still there and it's the hut shaped building, but they are takeout only. You can no longer sit in them. It's an abortion clinic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Takeout. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, um, it's takeout only. Why can't you go in? They just closed the dining room. So yeah. it's just like a lot of them did that. It's hard to find a sit down pizza hut that these days. But, but they have employees. It should just be all automated. If you just order a pizza, yeah. it just makes it with a robot. There's just I mean, fucking pizza hut robots sure. inside that call you a cracker. <laughs> they like, we'll make it quick. Get the fuck away from the pizza. <laughs> That'll be fun when the robots start insulting yeah. us. Oh, man, I can't wait. Yeah. Have you? uh it's bullying us. God, I forget what I was just going to ask you. This is about Pizza Hut, though. Have you ever been to a Pizza Hut that has a buffet in it? A Pizza Hut buffet? Yep, yep. The one I went to growing up had the buffet. <gasps> yeah. That was always a treat when you find oh, those. Oh, yeah. They had the dessert pizza, which was just trash. It was just like oh, dough yeah, with awful. like chocolate syrup on no it. No one cared about that. But it was still neat Because if you see. were, if you had enough space in your stomach to eat the dessert pizza by that point, you didn't yeah. care about the quality. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Definitely, There's you no could. 
Unfortunately, you couldn't drink at Pizza Hut. I've never been to a Pizza Hut where they served alcohol, but that's like... Yeah, I guess not. Be like how you're drunk off the pizza. You have beer goggles they on. They might have had beers goggles. back in the day. Maybe back in the day. Yeah. I wonder if there was ever a point in America where it was like dirt cheap to get a liquor license. They just wanted everyone to sell beer and shit. Probably. Now it's like kind of hard. It is hard, especially in Pennsylvania. Our laws are really whack with <sighs> alcohol. Have you ever been to a KFC buffet? No. There was when we used to drive to Worlds when I was a kid down in Florida, and when we would come home, there is a KFC buffet in one what of the is states. It just like piles of fried chicken. Yeah, and wow. like a big container of mashed potatoes and mac and cheese and gravy yeah, and coleslaw and anything you could want from fucking that's pretty KFC. Lit. Yeah, so I would amazing. just get. I like their mash, their crappy mash. Yeah, I would just get like three scoops of that. KFC when we were kids was genuinely good. It it's was gone down. That's another one history, that yeah. I cannot eat it. Oh, it's bad, yeah. Like their chicken is trashed. I used to so love those famous bowls when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. And I haven't gotten a famous bowl. The thing Jim, Ga Jim Gaffigan famously made fun of, I think. Or no, it was Patton Oswald. Oh, Had really? a bit where he's like, you're taking a bowl and you're putting corn. And he just goes through the <laughs> ingredient. And it's like, and then you're serving it. It's like a trough of food. <laughs> it's delicious. Just, it is delicious. It's all mixed together. But White people are so silly. They're like, oh, I love this thing. I just yeah. want to listen to another fat white person make fun I of it. I know. It's, it's like Patton Oswalt was definitely eating famous. Yeah. Food. It's literally what Dave Chappelle says about white people when they get drunk. They just recount and calculate everything they consumed over the course. <laughs> like, Two cheeseburgers, a bong <laughs> hit, three, <laughs> <laughs> three, three slices shots. of pizza. Yeah. Dave stuck a carrot in his ass like <laughs> that's exactly how white that. people are yeah. all the time <laughs> no matter what <laughs> it's just a list what is, is that from his stand-up yeah it's yeah. from like killing me softly killing me softly yeah. yeah a friend of mine that's a tattoo artist in philly uh posted a picture of these like trading cards he found he was at like one of his friend's houses that has like an archive of all this cool shit but he was like holding up a trio or like four or five different packs of cards. One of them was like a wild thornberries trading card back. Another one was like a goosebumps trading card pack. Yo, I got <laughs> some trading cards in that purple box right there to show you. I got hustler trading cards oh my from God. the seventies. We can't look at They're those. They're so sick. Dude. Just show me those. Off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want some of the hustler trading cards, DM. They're Drake so or I. fun. <laughs> no, I got them from cleaning out a comic book store with my friend when we were young. Damn. He went out of business, and what we were going to do with them. I um, like put them in paintings for a while, yeah. like collaged them and stuff, but they're just too cool to throw away. Like oh, when yeah, you see you can't them, throw them away. they're so fucking funny because they're like, like that all the that. names are obviously fake of these women and they have their <laughs> stats on them, which are their breast size, their, <laughs> their stats. Their, like, oh, wave, yeah, it has their stats on the back and then a little quote. And one of them's name is like Molly and she's like an Irish <clears throat> girl and she's like, course, right I'll here. sleep with anyone except a. Uh, a fucking Englishman who's fighting the IRA because I'm an IRA girl, <laughs> oh the, like this crazy like Republican <laughs> oh Irish Republican God. Army like chick. And She's like, all I want to do is play golf and be white. In <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very sick. They're very cool cards. Oh my God. So yeah, they may had cards. I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah, no, they had like incredible. wild any like thing back then. They made cards of yeah like, every single thing, every cartoon show. I'm glad that you reminded me while we were talking about them because I was totally enamored by the thought of hustler cards yeah. and all the different stats they could list for these girls. Anyway, yeah. So we had a couple of packs of cards. One of them was like American legends from the colonial era or something. Oh and it was in God. like a wax pack. Yeah, but I quoted the Dave Chappelle special where he's like, money's like baseball card to slave owners <laughs> it's like god this is so fucking true yeah that's the first thing i love to bring up when anyone starts talking about like how we're banning all this russian shit right now it's like literally our money has like thomas jefferson on it who like openly raped a slave and had yeah. a kid with it and like but he's on the five dollar bill so that's chill <laughs> yeah. but we shouldn't drink russian vodka anymore because that's it's you know a little bit concerning <laughs> yeah you can't get russian standard anywhere it's like my favorite vodka do they actually make that in russia or is it just the i'm pretty sure it? that one's actually made in russia that's funny i don't know but i like it what's another good topic uh so wawa's been getting a lot of mainstream coverage lately really yeah in what way they mentioned it on joe rogan a couple weeks ago 
like one of the comedians that like Wawa, really? Yeah, he mentioned it. I don't know how he knew about it, but I guess you know he tours and shit. But damn, the Rogan bump! I know, isn't that why? I mean, you can't really. It's not really a Rogan bump because you can't get it anywhere. Like everyone that's here yeah. knows about it, so yeah. it's not like we're like, oh, I need to go get a fucking hoagie. Like I'm sick and tired of Wawa. Like it's sick, yeah. but it's great. Like it's convenient. In a I don't, pinch, it's fine. Right, I rarely eat it as an adult anymore, but. It's like getting a Pizza Hut from Target. Like if I'm near a Wawa and I'm really hungry, like I'll grab a real talk. I I probably put the Pizza Hut maybe one tier. Well, maybe they're neck and neck. I think yeah, they're on the same level yeah, for me personally. Tiers, they're yeah. like not that great, but I'll no. take it. It's cheapish. When you're a kid, Wawa is like otherworldly good. Yeah, for some reason. I mean, everything's well, good when you're. I a kid. think when we were younger too, they might have still been like cutting their own meats in the store and stuff. Yeah, when I was a kid, you could buy deli meat mm -hmm. from Wawa. Yep, I they don't do that. that anymore. Like we could go and so buy sandwiches changed. and then get that's a pound of ham. And we're shit so nostalgic too. about it because it's like mm, growing up. It was, it was a good, real yeah. hoagie, right? And now it's not at all. It's just it's no better than Subway. It's just the prepackaged lunch. And meals. they're always out of like everything I want. They never have chili. Yeah, like all the stuff that's like kind of could be. The, there's like several things on the menu have the room to be good. But they're just bad. I do like that Thanksgiving sandwich, the gobbler. No, the turkey you on like that's that? so bad. And it's it trying to be turkey. the Capriati sandwich. And the Capriati yeah. sandwich is delicious. Do you ever go it's, have that? No, I haven't. I've, I've never had a It's bobby. funny we're talking about hoagies. I've been on a journey recently. My girlfriend recommended Jersey Mike's to me. Yeah. And I was like, you're out of your mind. I grew up working at Subway, okay? So yeah. I just assumed all these sandwich shops are just Subway ripoffs. And no, Jersey Mike's is different. Jersey Mike's is truly a sub above. That's their slogan. Shit is so fucking I've good, been eating dude. Jersey Mike's for probably like 10 years now because I had them out in Phoenix. And I was like, what is this place? It's like a chain. I, I'm pissed it took me this long, dude. It's new to our area in the mid-Atlantic. Yeah, well, there's one down the street. It's only been the last four there. or five years and they're rapidly expanding. They let's must have just, got investors or something. I started maybe five weeks ago and let's just say I've eaten enough to get rewards points to get a free hoagie already. Damn. Like that's how many hoagies I've eaten. Oh, I just really keep eating club subs. Balling out till you fall out so over good, there. So Fuck good. it, we ball at Jersey yeah. Mike's. We need to do a hoagie show now that you're mentioning this. I know. Just I'm just going to eat show. the same hoagie. I'll eat, I'll eat uh, uh, pork deli meat for you. If we okay. If a different pork, you will. Well, there's a Capriati's nearby too. So really? that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So when I was, I never ate Capriati's when I was a kid, kid, because it was like kind of expensive compared to Wawa. Like yeah. it was maybe three or $4 more a sandwich. And that like really fucking mattered to my family, saving that extra six or seven mm -hmm. bucks for dinner. Um, but when I moved out to work at Yo-Yo Factory, like they opened a Capriati's down the street from us. And Hans went there after work one day and he's like, I got the best fucking sandwich from this place called Capriati's. It's got turkey stuffing and cranberry sauce on it it's out of this fucking world and then ben is like did you just list a sandwich that has stuffing on it you listed a sandwich that has bread and more <laughs> bread on it like God. what is your problem like why would you <laughs> eat this and then he's like it's so good and i walk into his office and i'm like that, you got this name of that sandwich shop wrong that's only in delaware and he's like yeah it says that on the menu and he holds the menu up and it's like a delaware favorite on the menu and i'm no like way. why the fuck is this open down here damn and we like went over there for lunch the next day or whatever and the guy who owned it was just from this area and he loved it so much he franchised one of the locations out there i did not realize they're a delaware thing and they, they just opened here they franchised the location in vegas too but it was like genuinely good and like they were priced like on the East Coast, like everything on the East Coast was still cheaper at the time than yeah. on the West Coast. And like everything was just way cheaper to eat there. Like a foot long sandwich was like six or seven bucks at the time. And everywhere else it was like nine, ten dollars already. Like inflation had kind of already hit because people right. had money in Phoenix. And uh, yeah, it was just wild hearing about it. But I used to get Bobby's all the time there. Every sandwich there is really good. They have one that's like a uh, Reuben, but with. Uh, that's what I want. Like. Yeah. I love like corned beef and shit like that. That's yeah. my favorite. They do Pastrami. a lot of like, great sandwiches. Yeah. All right. I'll try that next. So anyways, I've been on this Jersey Mike's kick. So I tried Primo Hoagies too. Primo Hoagies, not nearly as good as Jersey Mike's. No, but it is okay. It's okay. It's good for a chain. Yeah. It was, Jersey Mike's is damn near S tier though. I feel like, oh, especially yeah. for a chain. It's and People don't believe me. you. Yeah. Even the employees, like the employees mm -hmm. are like Chick-fil-A -like, most of the time. They're I've been back to one there or cutting two. The or... Meats. They're back there chopping the cheesesteak on the flat top. Like I got a cheesesteak from there the other night. It was great. It the was pickles great... are thick. They're opaque. They yeah. don't have translucent pickles. Not no. a shitty brine. No. they Just the fact that they cut they the meats. They got the pepper insane. jelly. Not jelly. Yeah, the uh, pepper the relish. Yeah, the relish. Thank you. Hell yeah, the, the pepper relish. relish. All the bread tastes fresh. It is 
just a great sandwich. I'll great. eat it any stuff. day of the week. So, um, yeah, better than Wawa. Oh my gosh, it's for sure. Wawa. I'm sorry. I'm Wawa, excited to try. It's a different sandwich. Yeah, when I first went, I was like, "Why are they cut?" Like I was kind of shook that they were just cutting it like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I wonder how many of these employees ever slip and cut themselves on the deli slice. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of hard to cut yourself on the deli slicer, though. But yeah, I don't know. Wawa food's not overrated, but it just, it hits different. And now, I also feel like when I was a kid, the service was just a lot better. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe they like. Was, they ran it more like a deli. Now it's run by like a super mega chain that it is. Like everyone's just miserable there. It's still, dude. it's not like under new ownership or anything, but yeah, you're right. Like everyone's just miserable there. And I don't know. They got too big. They got too big, man. Yeah, they kind of used to pay more, I feel like, than the app. Maybe not. I don't they know. still pay decent. They start at 15, I think, yeah. which for around here is very good. Oh, yeah, it's great for anywhere, I feel like, um, for it to start out. You know what I mean? And like, I know a girl I grew up with live, moved to Philly after high school and managed a Wawa in Philly and made like 80 grand a year. Like she made good money yeah, managing sure Wawa, enough places, to buy a house. Yeah, that's sick. So her and her husband both managed different Wawas. And Clear, together, yeah, they that's bought a house wild. in Philadelphia. Yeah, so it's insane. like, yeah, it's insane. But they pay good enough. I mean, in management, at least. Yeah, I feel like anywhere in management pays well. But do you remember? Or so many people that we know have worked as gas station attendants in Wawa, like in Jersey and stuff, uh, yeah. like CJ. And really? Eddie and, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. It's I such hate a that you easy can't pump job. your own gas yeah. in Jersey. You don't have, I mean, you could just do it and no one's really going to like. Really? I do it all the time and no one says anything. Like, as oh, long as okay. you know what you got to do or whatever. I forget what the Wawa thing. You think you just have to like flip the, right. the thing up or something and then press zero on the the amount to do a card. Like, uh, okay. whatever the amount, it'll just, you know what I mean? Like Interesting. Can, yeah. I feel like they'd get really mad at you, but. It's technically uh-huh. illegal and like the yeah. employees can get in a lot of trouble because the whole reason that they do it is so it prevents people from technically like exploding. Right. <laughs> Spontaneously combusting. I guess like, it makes sense. It just seems like the guys doing it aren't necessarily being any more oh, no. cautious. Than yeah. They don't were... make you turn your car off. I always right. leave my car on. That in itself like made me into a like an awful habit person with leaving my car on putting gas in it. Cause I like, they yeah, never made me turn you're it not off. Supposed in to do that, are you? Oh no. Have you yeah. ever seen the videos of someone who leaves their car on while they're no. pumping gas? Why do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> cause I'm, no, I cause just don't care. Yeah. Cause it's hot in the summer. Cold. Yeah, in the winter. <laughs> Here on the East coast, you only have a good two week uh, interval where you can yeah. <laughs> safely we were almost there. Yesterday. Turn your car off while you're pumping gas. Yeah. But like, yeah, if you have your car on and the current of electricity is still running through it and then you go to like, like cre- static electricity, yeah, it creates static touching, electricity. So. Yeah. And then if like there's gas fumes making their way out from your gas pump, it'll, there's a possibility. Jesus. Yeah. It's very low that it happens. Yeah. That like never happens. Yeah. The videos are wild. Have you ever watched one of those videos? Or no, I seen haven't. Because it? it looks like nothing happens. Like it is someone getting in and out of their car. But like, you know, if you walk in and out of the house, like the static electricity, sorry. Up. No, you're yeah. Good. It is. Everything starts catching on fire and shit and it's like what the fuck's going on that's crazy yeah have you ever seen any faces of death videos <laughs> when I you were a kid I've seen them yeah dude. my dad let me rent one of those when I was a kid for some reason I that's saw such horrible a shit as a kid I saw one of the worst things I saw early on was Nick Berg beheading the guy who was like a oh, photojournalist yeah yeah I watched that just too. sawing that awful, his head yeah. off like was that on rotten.com yeah, yeah rotten.com yeah. so rotten.com <laughs> Fucked me bad. It's trauma bonding, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fucked me up bad. No, Rotten.com was great when we were it kids. It was great. So like, I, I still to this day have a morbid fascination with stuff like that. And I remember, uh, I'll seek out because everyone we were kids was always talk about like how Tupac was still alive and shit. Yeah. But you could look at the Tupac autopsy photos yeah, where on Rotten.com. Has stitches. Yeah, and I'm like, there's no way you can Photoshop this guy's trust no. me. Like, this is real. <laughs> Tupac is dead. Like, <laughs> Right. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot about that one. That one was crazy. Oh, yeah, we should definitely do some some tier lists of definitely yo-yo topics. We could do so many yo-yo topic yeah. tier lists. But fast food would just be fun too. Yeah, this chain restaurant. Or I know, hella people have done it, but it'd just be cool. Yeah, to do why it. not? Yeah, talk about it. Yeah. Oh, um. 
Have you ever heard of uh, a banana spider? Yes, they're huge, right? I don't know how big they are. I didn't actually Google how big they are. they're enormous, dude. They just, they, like, they kill you. Let me Google it and we'll just read it off. Damn, I should have. Maybe it's a different type of spider you're thinking of. (laughs) Here it is. (laughs) All right. This doesn't look real. (laughs) Daily Mirror, but it is very funny. You can read the headline. No, let me. (laughs) I would need to find an actual... Oh, no, here, here's a BBC article. Okay, so it's real. Wow. So these spiders, these banana spiders, they bite you. And then I guess if you're a man, I don't know what it would do if you're a woman. What do you think it would do if it's you're a woman? Brazilian wandering spiders can cause a man to have an extremely painful erection that lasts for wow. four hours and then you die. <laughs> you wow. just die with the hardest dick you've yeah. ever had in your life. Oh, that's <laughs> what an awful way to go. A painful erection just sounds terrible too. <laughs> like one that hurts really bad. Yeah, I've never taken a uh, a Viagra or anything like that in no, my I life. Haven't. I've never need the had the need to, but I'm like kind of afraid that if I did, like I definitely would have an erection lasting longer than four hours right? or like, I don't know, it would give me a heart attack or something. Cause it does, it increases your blood flow like throughout your body. <laughs> it seems so like it a, just like everything becomes like a little bit, uh, if you engorged. absolutely need it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, fucking Owen Wilson knows while you're trying to yeah. fuck your life. <laughs> Everything's just a little bit inflamed. <laughs> right. You look like Dan Dietz. You just got rosy ass <laughs> jeans all the time. <laughs> only when I take Dietz. a dick pill. <laughs> oh, he, he came to, uh, he came to, uh, the booth said this, this uh, thing I'm doing for Andre with Curdy, and like he brought this. He married a girl from Brazil, like an au pair. These girls from Brazil come here and then are an au pair for like right. a rich family, and then they get like a free place to live and they make a little money, and then they yeah. can marry a guy like Dan. But uh, she was like, watch. He like they had a kendama player at the booth who was being really obnoxious and just like putting kendamas in people's hands as they were walking by like you try a kendama like you try a kendama yeah it was really obnoxious and too much he wasn't really doing much like in terms he was selling like a a, a, things here and there but it's like doing more harm than good when you're like scaring a dozen people away and then enticing one person versus like if you entice the five people that actually care in the meantime but uh he like gave Dan a kendama and like Dan knew a couple of kendama tricks. I was like busy checking someone out or whatever, but I like heard him on the mic and he's like, this guy's going insane. He knows the earth turn and he can do big cup, little cup, bottom cup. Oh my gosh. And yeah. what about yo-yo? Can you do any yo-yo tricks? And oh, like Curdy didn't see him at the time because Curdy was like, not embarrassed by it, but it's like, okay, like this guy's going to do his thing. Like, I'm just going to be over here teaching someone how to yo-yo or whatever. Yeah. And then when he turned around, it was Dan Deeds. And he's like, oh shit, look who it is. And it's fucking Dan Deeds over there, like yo-yoing for everyone. But he's nice. like hamming it up, like putting it on a show, doing like circular Eli hops and shit. It was mad funny because it was just like, obviously Fair the guy right. had no clue who he was. And yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. oh, I'm going to take this opportunity to show off. Like this guy doesn't know who I am. And then as soon as he saw us, he was like, oh, hey guys, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Hey. Yeah. A little embarrassing for old Dan, but no, Dan's no. great. Yeah. I love Dan. He, I don't know. Him. A few years ago, he, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No. Yeah. He was really young say. when you were in yeah. the scene. One year, he went to that New York contest when, uh, when we were younger, remember really? that, that contest, Pat? 2007 or 8. Yeah. He went in 2008. It was yeah. either 2008 or 9. It might have been 2009 because I didn't go that year. And I think that was the year. It was like the week before Worlds. Right. But he went. And he was yo-yoing on stage and uh, he has like a, fir- his first trick for a while was like a drop suicide green triangle where like he does a green triangle and hangs over his arm and he catches the suicide. Yeah. Below. And he did that on stage and dropped into God into a knot. And then instead of just being like, oh, I'm going to move on or taking the L and accepting it, he was like, oh, you, I think you like started the music in the wrong place. Like, can you start it again? Do you remember no, this? Oh, no. Okay. That's horrible. So, and Pat's like, uh, all right, man. Like, are you sure? Like, and then he's like, they hired like a DJ, like a DJ who works at like, the remember. clubs yeah, in New yeah. York. So he's not starting the music in the wrong place type shit. He might have been like playing some background music and then scratched it in, like, and counted in like three, two, one, right. go. And then the song started but like whatever and then dan was like 
oh, dude, it was just weird. Like, and they were like, all right, like, we'll just start it the regular way. Then like, we'll do a fancy lead in. Like, we'll just start it in regular. And he's like, all right, three, two, like not three, two, one. He's like, all right, everyone, Dan Dietz. And they play the music. Same thing happens again. Literally gets a nod on the same trick. I didn't believe John Rob when he told me this. But then when he showed me the video again, I was like, wow, this is wild. And then he fucks up again. He gets a knot and then the yo-yo shoots back up and he's like, oh, you guys messed up my music again. Like you played in the wrong place. No. Yeah. And Pat, second time. Pat was like, are you serious? And he's like, yo, Dan, like we're not doing this again. Like this is the last time. And then he like joked around. He's like, you need a coffee? You need a cappuccino? Like what do you need? Like, are you sure? Like you're good? Like this is the last time we can do it? All right, cool. And then apparently he made it past that trick, but he still fucked up. And then he made it to finals and he ended up getting like third. But like people were pissed off because of that. Cause like wow. he shouldn't have even final to begin with, you yeah, know what that's I mean? Cheating. Yeah. But uh, a few years ago he was selling some renegades on uh, the BST. And this is before the price of yo-yos went up and he was trying to sell them for like 30 a piece. And I was like, I'll give you 20 a piece for these shipped. And he was like, Oh, I really need to get 30 for him or want to get 30. I forget exactly what he said, but I was like, all right, man. Well, like when you want me that $40, you let me know how I can send it to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then an hour later, he messaged me back like, yeah, you can send it to my faith. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you motherfucker. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, wait for these running. At the time, no one was buying yo-yos. You know right. what I mean? It was a steal, but now they probably would be like $50 a piece. Like, that's wild to me. Yeah. That was a great segment last time on the... Yeah, Where yeah. You were looking up old that speeder today. I sent you was wild. And my huh? Lynn Fury came. Oh yeah, yeah. good lead-in. Speeder is on the topic list. I want to talk about those all over print yo-yo jams, but yeah, I got this sweet Lynn Fury off eBay. They did a real tree camo one day. They year. did. Yeah, yo-yo jam would cover the whole yo-yo with some Hydro sort of plastic yeah. film, and Tyler sent me a sweet speeder that's just an American flag all over. The whole thing. Have you ever seen those people on YouTube that like spray paint on the surface of water and then dip shit in it? And yeah. It, it's I the same it. thing. Yeah. Okay. But like it's a like a plasticky film that you lay on the surface of water and then you can dip shit in if it. We you can do it on anything. That out. You can do it on your dunks in your backyard, dude. You can order all the shit to do it like literally. It's, but not like a beautiful American flag. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You could you could print. You could get all over print of your face and send it to them and yeah. they can print it out like whatever you want on the shit of plastic and get it sent to the crib. It just, as soon as you right. ding it, it starts chipping off. Right. Back in the day, people kind of cared about that shit. That's why, do you remember the peak when it came out? People didn't want to buy the peak because yeah, it was painted. The painted yeah. They were like, oh, it's going to get damaged. Like who wants the yo-yo like that? And then it took like, that was the same year that they dropped the peak, the 401k. And I want to say one or two it was like Christmas 2005. Was that the same year the pyro came out too? The pink yep. pyro. And, I think so. And I think Kyle Weems dropped a yo-yo or something the that fee. Christmas too. I want to tell, mm -hmm. I might as well tell on record the biggest L I ever took in yo-yoing. Um, <laughs> besides getting second in the world, that's a pretty big L. But this was a... Uh, I had my mom get me a painted peak for Christmas. Oh, I remember this story now. Fuck. First run, Yo-Yo Nation. One of, what, 50 pieces? Beautiful piece no, of art. No, it was art. more than that. I think it was there like were not 100. Many. Maybe, maybe 100, 100. Maybe 150. There were not many. Um, And I got it, and it's, I loved it because it was so cool. The finish was like was an so eggshell. Yeah. But it wobbled a good bit, like a, a fair amount. In hindsight, Even for the time? For the like? time. In hindsight, who gives a shit? It's a beautiful piece of art. Just, you know, enjoy You were it. 14 at the but time, right? But I was right? probably 13. 13. So you're not thinking about it like, oh, this I is a piece like, of art. It can I, have imperfections. Yeah, because like, they would advertise shit as smooth back then too. And mm. it would show up and it would not be fucking smooth. And it, like as a little That's nerdy true. autistic kid, I was like, this is not okay. So I hit up Chris. Of my own accord, I just like emailed Chris and was like, it's kind of wobbly. I don't really, can you like help me out anyway? And he's like, sure, you're going to be at Worlds 05. Um, come find me and I'll give you a trade you can't refuse. So I went and found him and he's like, here, I got the new Boyd Seth Bear versus Man. Mm. It's not even out yet. I'll give you two of them. For so two first round bear versus man for he's like I just want the peak I know it wobbles but like I want one because I didn't get to keep one for myself was it the gray green splash uh, yes the gray oh, yeah. dark gray like gunmetal mm -hmm. with dark green yeah. very sick and yeah. they were 
glass smooth. Great like they were right. really, oh, yeah. they Those were, were they changed. Yeah. It, this weren't painted. It was just the paint making it wobbly. It's like yeah. understandable. But I was, you know, a picky kid, so I traded it back to him. So I hope he still has it, and I hope Chris enjoys that peak, um, or someone who has it enjoys it. But I certainly regret getting rid of that because that would be like a crown jewel in my collection now, just because of the story and how unique of a yo-yo that was. On one of Chris's uh, whirlwind relationships, that got to like the level of him proposing to the girl, and like it was. A girl who actually got Caribou Lodge to like the next level of his business. Like it took him from like a kind of a side project business and him having trouble getting to the next level to like she really helped him get to that next level in a lot of ways. But uh, when things didn't work out, like she waited probably two and a half, three years or something. But like after two and a half, three years, she went back and sold like all of her Caribou Lodge yo she wow. gave him because at the time she was like keeping one of each one or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. So she sold like 25, 30 yo-yos all on eBay. And at the time they were just worth like, that was when Caribou Lodge was like going for a mint and like, you know, everything went for absurd for amounts her. of money. Yeah. <laughs> it crazy. was just, it was cringe. Not, I didn't want to say cringe. It was as like someone else who's very sensitive and goes through shit in relationships, like reading Chris, like going through that on beat out is just like, Oh man, like yeah. that sucks. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that sucks sure. to have to watch. You know what I mean? Because I'm sure he has the notification set on eBay. Like anytime a Caribou Lodge yo-yo goes up for sale, like notify me so that if I want to bid on it, I can. And then he sees like his ex post fucking thirty of them, and it's like, oh, cool. Damn. <laughs> and that then like brutal, yeah. your ex that you like don't necessarily ever want to like help out again, and you it's not like you want to see an ex fail or whatever, but it's like you don't want to indirectly give them like five or six grand. <laughs> Right. <laughs> that when she like it wasn't like the greatest of endings if I remember right or whatever it was just you know it's a mess as relationships often are when they end but anyway so you've been buying a lot of yo-yos on eBay recently do you have your Jason Tracy yeah. over there too I met Jason Tracy at a which is amazing BLC. This, is, I, this just came up in conversation in that um have I you was, opened it and played with it yet no not yet you don't have I to. just like to look at it yeah first. it's cool but uh, I will play with it. Um, this came up in conversation on Doc Pop's podcast, that one where he was talking to the guy who invented Corkscrew and did the Fiend tour. What's his name? Jorge? Not Jorge. Um, Loves Tao. Tao. So they mentioned how you should Jason Tracy like was selling these. Yeah. The logos is so neat. And Doc Pop was like, yeah, the Cosmic Otter. Jason Tracy had a bunch of those on tour. He was selling them. And like that was, it was just neat that I had B other BC yo-yos growing up. And it's neat that they actually had him on the team and gave him a signature like wooden yo-yo. I think it was a way for him often. to make money on the Fiend tour. Did yeah. they tell that story on the not, podcast? Not in detail, but. I don't know if this is correct or not. I think Jason may have told me, but like, yeah, I think it's like another BC yo-yo that they just painted with like right. a custom Right, yeah, it's job. not a special model. It's just special a special edition. Yeah. edition yeah. But uh, yeah, I think he got like a hundred of them or whatever. And then when they were on the Warp tour, like. He could sell them like at the stops or whatever to make some extra money. I don't know. And I think that paint job is also inspired by old Duncans that were painted that way. Yeah, but it had like a stripe normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just like. I've never seen looks. one other than this painted the gap. I'm sure they exist, but I like the gap painting. I like the logo. Yeah, I really want to start. Like, I wish more people liked yo-yo clothing or would be interested in it because I would love to do like old yo-yo graphics. Yeah. Like all the old Duncan graphics from like the 50s and 60s yeah. and 70s. Because it's all one color shit that you could put on a black or white so t-shirt. It would you look great. Try. Yeah, I maybe I will. Hard, a lot of work, but eh, it's not that I much. think it would. They would sell, I think. <sighs> Cosmic fucking otter. It's a great name too. It's just like, you. I'm always so curious about how yo-yos like that happen. Not specifically the Cosmic Otter, but like just yo-yos with like a great name, great artwork, great color. Like... Because Jason isn't like, he didn't go on. He seemed like. He's a successful dude, but I think he just like does sales or something. Yeah. What was that? But in yo-yoing even, 
I don't know exactly what he invented. People revere or, him. Yeah. But he's like just a cult legend kind of. He was just seems I think he was just one of those guys that was really cool. That's just always okay. how it came across. He's a good to hang. Me. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. I think I he was like kind of overweight when he was younger. Maybe that was the case. He like had a Yeah, I don't know. It was know. like did you ever remember Capu when we were younger? Yeah. Like just how crazy and funny and awesome yeah, yeah. Gabby was. It's like a defense mechanism when you're like really yeah. heavy where it's like, oh, I've got to be funny because people will not want to hang Cappy's out with me Cappy's another otherwise. like underground legend who just Dude, doesn't really. Dude, Cappy <laughs> really isn't. Uh, back in the day, he was very mainstream yo-yo. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut no, you. Worry, sorry. I'm just saying he was, he's someone people don't think about. Name, name drop often, but. Yeah, I he mean, used to come like to a lot of West Coast contests when I was a kid. responsible for spin doctors, right? Yes. Yeah. He like, started spin docs. Yeah, which is um, insane. And, it's and then funny. back in the day, he used to have a string, a site called the String Cemetery. Did you ever hear about yes, this? Yes, I did. I never went on it, though. I, I used to try to find it on the Wayback Machine, but I think Dave was really good at scrubbing it because I couldn't really find any snapshots of the site. But, like, it was, uh, it was just funny. It's basically, like, the unpopular yo-yo opinions. But, like, really? Dave was, like, authoring every post it's and like being, blogs. like... Yeah, being like, Joel Zink sucks. This is why he shouldn't have won Worlds. Oh, or he yeah, shouldn't have won Nationals. Rocks. Like, shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it was mainly because Hans's dad back in the day was doing really crazy shit. Yeah. Like, Hans's dad owned Proyo. Um, right. And he would do things like send cease and desists to people who posted. Julian Van Den Elsen, right? Uh, Tom Van Den Elsen. Tom Van Den Elsen. Yeah. Um, he would send like cease and desists to kids online that were posting directions for how to mod his yo-yos or like, oh, um, here's how you can make like your own brake pads at home. Like you just yeah. buy a cork with a heel on the back and cut it around it. And he would like literally send them like a legal notification in the mail to a child. <laughs> it's insane. Um, I mean, he I don't know if it was him directly. Like what happens in those situations a lot with really bigger companies that have like a lot of employees and shit. They just have a law firm on retainer right. and he may have just been sending cease and desist to other companies that were really infringing on patents. And then the lawyers like went above and beyond and like went and got, you know, went and digitally looked at everything that was mentioning Proyo was like, Oh, this is infringing. Like let's yeah, just doing their job. Yeah. Back in the day when we were kids, I don't know if you remember, but, uh, Duncan, the law firm that represents Duncan and Flambeau sent like Sebastian Brock and a bunch of people cease and desists that mentioned trademark terms on their websites that they owned. Like if you had a GeoSites website that mentioned like Butterfly Yo-Yo, that's a trademark Whoa. by Duncan Yo-Yo. Sebastian got hit with one? Yeah, with a cease and desist. It's not like he was really going to get sued. It's just yeah. he, he ignored it and that's all you have to do. But it's like the the parent the law firm that Duncan has retained being like oh like you have a trademark term on your website that looks like you're monetizing somehow because there's advertisements right. on it you know what I mean but at, Sebastian isn't making money off it it was literally a website for like a college class that he yeah made, yeah so. yeah that's very funny isn't it? yeah shout out to Duncan and Yo Yo Factory <laughs> back in the day anyway. There's a new Hajime trick on Instagram. Did you see that? I did not see the triple A trick. He posts a triple A trick and then he posts a solo ham trick. Let's watch him real quick. I'll overlay him in the video. Yeah. Um, hey Siri, remind me to overlay the Hajime new tricks from Instagram in the pod with Jake. Hey, look at this. Wow. Nice. There you go. She spelled Hajime's name right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Mm. The solo ham's the really cool part, but this shit's cool too. I love that his that triple A is, fun. is uh his triple A is just a little more simplistic. This is sick though. It's all one Jesus, string. Jesus, that's insane. He's not doing two strings anymore. Wow. Look at Ooh. that. <laughs> and then he just catches the one yo yo. And then, so less string to deal with, which I think is a huge innovation. Yeah. That's um, crazy. He doesn't People have, to, have been doing those kind of restarts for a worry, long time. Right. But he doesn't have to worry about maintaining a string on his shoulder the whole time. He can just. Yeah. I just wonder how much 
spin you can actually generate off one of Enough, those pools dude, to, to do one trick not the whole point to do i mean yeah yeah it's all i'm thinking about it from like a competitive aspect because sure. it is a very cool just like people have been doing that restart for a long time but it is cool i just i feel like people always look at hajime from the competitive aspect and it's like right oh it's cool we need one yeah less maybe string, he won't compete like, that way but i just yeah thought it was pretty solo hum i don't think is ever gonna be able to pick up enough points to compete with just single yo-yo off string. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah. Unless what I was saying about his triple A tricks and the simple style of it, because like they're not simple tricks, like they're all by far the most difficult triple A tricks that have been ever created. Not ever. Like there's a myriad of different tricks throughout history that have varying degrees of difficulty, but like his, like he is inspired by Hank a lot. Where like Hank is keeps the yo-yos continuously moving and like yeah. back in the day that's what everyone used to call real triple A or like true triple A right because like there was a lot of players that used to just like we're doing one A with a second right yo-yo get into a really complicated mount yeah. yeah and then like the one yo-yo would be static and then yeah you're just doing a really complicated trick with the other yo-yo and yeah right so it's cool to see him like adopting that old school flow but like with current meta and like advancing the meta and innovating and i don't even want to call it old school flow because a lot of people in recent history have been saying that about me yeah like old oh flow. yeah i'll be like oh like you have a really like old school flow and it's so cool and it's like yo like just because something is timeless or like is a good trick now and a good trick forever like a lot of those tricks no we trust watching, me i get the old school flow all the time too. yeah but it's the same thing like i'll watch a lot of your old tricks and like i was a hater back in the day and i'd be like this is kind of simple like yeah. you could do harder tricks and now i look at them like yo this is if someone did this, this end, now though. this would be an amazing trick right again that like yeah the whole thing is incredible yeah. yeah and the hank reference is very true all and that's it. why i like his 3a so much is because i always liked hank's 3a yeah and it's so very clearly and it is interesting. He took Hank's crown. I don't know if I've ever used this analogy with you before. And I always say it to people who don't have any sort of background in art history. But if you ever look at an artist's history from like when they first start and they're like learning how to do like realism and like just trying to copy yeah. like one for one shit and they're like getting their skills together and they're like eventually finding their own style and like developing that and like by the end of their life like they're doing the simplest shit and people might think it's because like they're inhibited by their movement because they're getting old but it's actually because they're able to get their message across with less right. emphasis you yeah. know what i mean and yeah. i feel like it's like he's, Picasso. And yeah, that. and he's doing that already. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, yo, you're fucking 18 years old and you're yeah. like at a master class. That's exactly. a great, great uh, Picasso idea. is a great uh, 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 parable though just because like, uh, you know, he has all those one-line drawings that he did. and At like, the very end, he was just doing like blocks of color too. Yeah, like toward the end, yeah. So, but he was able to convey the but same then you, feeling and message. And For anyone who only knows Picasso's like... Uh, cubism cubism just google like early picasso and see that he did just beautiful ass portraits and like regular, michelangelo type like, shit like yeah. victorian era style painting so but. he got to cubism people love to shit on it. it's like i could do it. it's like he got there through a lot of other work I don't know what the hell that was. ghost or cat something ghost cat ghost cats um yeah, yeah dude, he got Hajime that through a lot of work much. though and yeah yeah, very fun to watch. Kind of similar with Hajime in a way. Like, not like his tricks have been... He's always been... Like, his tricks... Like, there's been years where he just was insanely difficult. You know what I mean? The level right. of tricks that he was doing. And now it's like... He's keeping it a little more simplistic. But, like, it's still very original and, like, innovative. And pushing it in a different direction creatively. It's super dope. I'm going to get another beer real quick. Oh, uh, yeah. Go for it. While we're on... It's still recording, right? Yeah. While we're on yo-yoing... I want to take this time to uh, plug the Yo-Yo Expert oh, wow. Edition Vino Wine Colored Dunk Rebound. It's a polished dark red. It's all I've been using lately. It's so nice. So beautiful. Um, yeah, exclusive to Yo-Yo Expert. So if you want one, head over there and check one out, please. This is my first time selling dunks to retailers, so 
I'm trying really hard to do my due diligence and help plug all the other retailers they're at then. They're also at. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I didn't. Good idea. Sorry, I apologize for my tone. They're also at Yo-Yo Sam. Um, Everyone hates how much I interrupt you. No, no. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah, sorry, this blanket's annoying. Um, Yo-Yo Sam, but my mom made this blanket. Oh, It's important to me. Um, (laughs) Yo-Yo Sam. Yeah, it's like my mom said. I love my mom. Um, YoYoSam.com has like all the out of stock colors for my website. Like, so the they got olive. a bunch of colors. They got yeah, they got like olive orange. So and, technically, they have a lot of exclusive colors too now, right? Or yeah, pretty much. Did Taka yeah. and Rewind pick some up? Or Taka picked up just orange, and they got an exclusive flux colorway. So Rewind.com, if you want the pink and black flux colorway. You got to order it from Japan. Sorry. It's Rewind yes. Yo-Yo. I don't know the actual Rewind URL. Rewind Yo-Yo.jp or something. <laughs> Just, you know, you can find it. Um, they're selling fine over there, though. Like, they don't even... I mean, of course, I'll plug it. <laughs> so- I think they're fine over there. But yeah. Yo-Yo Salmon, Yo-Yo Expert, you know. They love me out there in Japan. What's up, uh, man? Yeah. Dude, that guy sent me pictures of his case today. This guy, um, I wish I knew his name, um, who collects dunks in Japan, sent me a beautiful photos of his. I shared one of them on my Instagram, just like a case full of dunks. It's just really neat to see. That's awesome. Uh, When I was at the thrift store the other day, I found a really nice aluminum case with dividers mm. that I almost bought to put foam in. And I'm like, I don't need, I really regret not getting it now because I should have gotten it and it would have been, because I have just a, for future reference, if you see one, just grab it. I'll, I'll take it. If you don't want (laughs) it, I'll buy it for (laughs) you. No, I thought you're right. I've been looking for one. Like I want to replicate as close as possible. The one I have though. So like that nice, you know, like silver, Aluminum. I mean, it doesn't really matter, I guess. But it's all, I mean, you can buy those offline. I have all the other could, yeah. tools to make it happen. Like I can. Okay. I have the carving knife to cut the foam. I have a uh, star punch to cut out holes. Okay. I know where to order foam from. It's not as nice as the old Infinite Illusions foam. I need to source some like what it's just high. It's called high density foam, but like right. it just needs to be like the highest density possible. Greg's almost felt like fucking styrofoam. Yeah, it was, it was so crunchy. Nice. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he like sprayed it with starch or something weird. Yeah, I wouldn't he surprise might have done, me. Like, some kind of tricky fucking thing. Greg move. Have you ever watched one of his candy videos on it? Oh yeah, yeah. Dude. watch this man finger a banana before. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally forgot to set a a timer for the hour, but it's all good. That's okay. Yeah, I don't. The only other topic I have that I don't know if we want to save this for another episode. Maybe we should. Um, I want to just talk about at some point our 5 a.m. Everyone always says to you and I like, oh, you guys are really influential on modern 5A, you know, but like what what influenced us to do 5A? Yeah, we could close it out with that because we're at about an hour right now. Let me actually cut the clip real quick and then restart it. Or we could just tease it. Save it for a different. No, I kind of. We could. We can. I mean, we can talk about it again in another podcast. That's true. Because yeah. we're not. I don't really see us like you know digressing for an hour and a no. half about five A influences. But I mean, obviously, our first five A influence, I think, was probably no, well, not you, because your ears was more internet based, but probably mm-hmm. AJ, like yeah, serious five A influence. Like once you. You see Steve play 5A, and as a kid, like you, like me, I feel like we're into punk rock and like counterculture and just shit that wasn't like the regular stuff that everyone else was into, especially in yo yo, because there's a strong contingency of everyone doing the same thing. Everyone's using techno, everyone like is wearing the same shit, everyone kind of looks the same. So, like, you want to separate yourself and like steve is such an outlier in that way that yeah. that's what you're attracted to steve brown aj kirk for anyone who doesn't know that's who we're talking about yeah he was was he from pennsylvania originally or and then moved aj to yeah uh maybe i forget but yeah yeah surprisingly grew up like literally in the same town as me when i was a kid like in newcastle which is so funny because like we never wow. hung out until like kind of later in life but <laughs> yeah yeah aj for me Steve initially when I saw the Duncan video I always talk about but then AJ in person when I went to PA States 2004 or 5 um right before he he had got on yo-yo jam and stuff just seeing someone in person 
who was not Steve Brown, like someone just when more was this attained. season? PA State so I think 05. So mm. it was before Worlds 05 yeah. when he did really well and got on Yo-Yo Jam. He won PA State's 05 Y division with 5A. That's right. And I was like, this guy's awesome. Like he was using cool music. Was he cool to you when you were then that age? Like, I didn't was he a meet cool him person? at that okay. contest, but he seemed really nice. Yeah. I, I was not social when I was that age. I was very um, scared to talk to anyone, but I would like hang around and see that he was being nice. I, I knew he was a nice guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. And he I met just- him shortly after i probably yeah. met him at worlds that year and then um yeah very nice dude for sure so that was cool to see someone who was just like sort of on our level that we could aspire to be as good as yeah seeing someone who comes from relatively the same place you come from doing that's why representation matters everyone loves to like shit on marvel and all these other brands you're like oh we made buzz light you're black or whatever you know what i mean and it's like but that matters like it matters to kids and i always point that out to yo-yo websites whenever i meet people who own stores and like have the ability to like put people on in yo-yo and like whoever they promote i'm like look at like uh yo-yo players of color like they play like people who look like them you know what i mean like yeah a lot of black players play like harold and it's because they grow up watching harold or they play like markmon because they grow up watching markmon and it's like not some crazy eugenics thing it's not it just what it yeah. is like that you're attracted to like what you look like and they are inspired by white players too but it's just like they're drawn to who they look like because that's what inspires them and that's what makes them feel comfortable and like yeah that's fascinating yeah it's interesting to to view um <laughs> definitely no one ever notices it but when i start to point it out in videos and stuff or no, I, like it's true yeah like it really starts standing out when you look at certain elements and like but it's cool to see, you know what I mean? And I think it's just case in point, the representation matters. And like, that's why we need to, I always try to do that when I'm like picking kids out for my team or like, I'm like giving props to people, you know what I mean? I'm trying to like, make sure it's not always just to like the same person who's going to continuously give props no matter what, you know what right. I mean? Cause like, yeah. Anyway. Um, Other internet influences, big time. Andrew Lynn. Oh, yeah. Those like five those A five A forever. Is that pure what they were fi- Pure 5A, that's right. So, pure 5A? Pure 5A, yeah. yeah. Or 5A, pure freehand. Pure freehand, I guess. Yes. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. They're on Vimeo on the Glass Labs channel. Such good videos. Check these out, dude. Like, they sort of, they were so influential and big, and everyone talked about them when we were young, and now no one, but they hold up, dude. Like, the tricks in those. I mean, now everyone likes to like put out their content very quickly on Instagram. But back in the day it was, you'd save up your content and then put out a handful of videos a year yeah, or one per year. The good players, the best players only did one a year. Mikhail, Brazilian players, Brazilian players would have the most output, honestly, because they would constantly get together as a team. You're right. Whip cranked them out some tricks by whip remember that video holy shit i used to have the whole brazilian discography or everything that i could because i forget what yo-yo website but they basically just had like an open server that you could get a free website and free server space on and you could upload videos to host there and stuff and like i would just constantly find indexes and download everything that i could and like i probably had five six hundred videos at some point from players all over the world chinese players there used to be this chinese player back in the day that could like emulate mickey perfectly like in yeah. 2005 like just wild shit like um but so yeah interesting andrew though. lim was so good and like i was surprised when i was a kid that he wasn't world champion like that always kind of bummed me he out he got third or fourth one year in 2005 Two, he got third yeah. yeah then he got fourth and fifth i think the other years but people weren't sacrificing their styles their aesthetic to win back in the day you know what i mean like people refuse to do that now like people will look at the spreadsheet and be like oh i'm only three points away from first place all i got to do is one more combo like i'm in there but like back in the day people just would like try their best and hope for the best (laughs) Mm -hmm. it was so different but he invented angel wings which is the trick where the counterweights i didn't know that wow did he really are you sure 100 percent. wow yep who would you hear that from or how do you know he that? He premiered it in that video with oh, a wow. little name under it, Angel, like in part three, I think, or okay. part two. I mean, um, it's definitely a poi trick or a 2A trick too, right. but like it's not. But I mean, I'm quite 
certain. He translated it to five. He's the one That's who, sick. Yeah. Because Red Raphael did Spinner, which is just around your finger, both going the same way. And then he's the one who took it and made him going the opposite way, counterweight yeah. and yo yo. Um, Raphael is another one. The first world's freestyle I ever saw was 2003 5A world champion Raphael. Like that freestyle where he won. Um, really good. He invented like helicopter, which is a super. Even the mediocre five A freestyles back in the day used to be so good. Like yeah. the whole if you finaled at Worlds, oh, like yeah. it was a movie. Terry you know Makoto, I mean? all Raphael. those. Remember Terry's 04 Worlds freestyle legend is amazing. Yeah, it is. I, I think he got second that. that year, second or third. Yeah, but because yeah, it was Raphael 03, Raphael 04. <laughs> Did that or no, crazy it was Makoto feasting behind his head. Yeah, Makoto, Makoto 04, 04 yeah. 05. No, 05 was uh, I think it was Makoto again. Buko, Buko won in 05. Oh, yeah, Makoto got second. Mm -hmm. And then in 06, he didn't final. God, Makoto. They were like characters, dude. Yeah, that was always the shit we got talked on, too, was if Makoto would have finaled, then me and Dana would have not won. Yeah, I remember that, like, at Worlds Which is probably, I mean, it's definitely true. But he, Who knows, dude, he honestly? He didn't fucking final, and that's on you if you fuck up your compulsory state. Yeah. I'm sorry. Makoto's great. Like, yeah. he's amazing. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Makoto. Yeah, I love this. Makoto. <laughs> But I'm just, just saying, ripping him apart. You're I'm like, not ripping him if apart. If he doesn't fucking, if he can't do hop chops, uh -uh. if he can't do Eli hop chops, I'm just okay, saying, fuck him. Go back home. No, <laughs> Makoto, listen. <laughs> enough people have come up to me and been like, well, well, not enough people. Boxler. No, but yeah, Boxler, yeah. And it's, I, it's hurtful to be like, well, if this guy would have final, you wouldn't have gotten You second. wouldn't have yeah. gotten second. You would have gotten third at the very best. And it's like, but he didn't final. That's all I'm saying. Like, yeah. No, I hear you. You yeah. didn't get through the competition. No. So. It's good we're clarifying. Makoto is way better put some five respect eight, like, on his name. Of course, dude. I mean, I grew up watching it. We were just, the, I know you respect him, yeah. just for the record. Legendary. <laughs> He'll like my posts sometimes, and I'm like still yeah. get so excited too, when I yeah. see that. Every time, it's like a celebrity so when you see shit like that. Yeah, He is a celebrity to me. So uh, A few years ago, Buko was posting about she found some like Buko caps, some Buko freehand caps. Mm -hmm. somewhere and I was like oh like I'll buy a set from you and she's like oh expensive it's shipping to the US like I'll just bring to you someday and I was like oh fuck like, yeah. <laughs> god knows when I'll get those but sick. that's funny those were sick caps yeah her freestyle well was incredible you remember that it freestyle? really was the video killed the radio star. so clean like she went so clean with a responsive free hand I still use one of her triangles in some of my tricks. It's yeah. A, it's a great that triangle. one section. I can picture it now where she does like three triangles yeah. in a row. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> da, da, yeah. Da. yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. That's a good freestyle. Dude. It's an amazing. Even today, that would be an incredible freestyle. Mm -hmm. It would just for how clean she went and how it was very well choreographed. It was how like, choreographed. That's the big thing. Cause they weren't, back then like people didn't makoto was really good at that too choreographing yeah. almost every japanese I mean, player shit. was very good yeah. at choreographing makoto show was great dun, 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 dun. that like classical music that he yeah. used and he like bounces the yo-yo off the fucking ground the counterweight yeah and he's like spinning around and then catch it's crazy shit i do that trick during my yo-yo shows Kids nice love it. i just bounce it off the ground and it goes back and forth I use a metal yo-yo and it wow. makes a loud ass noise and everyone's like, whoa, was that on purpose? And I do it again. They're like, oh my God. <laughs> That's funny. I love that. <sighs> There's yeah. a lot of good content to dig up for old 2003, 4, 5, 5A stuff you should check out. It's funny. That I'm glad that you're bringing all these up because it is a lot more influential than I give it credit for. You know what I mean? That's Not that I'm I saying. don't give it credit. I just don't ever think about it. You know, that's what I'm saying. Everyone's always like yeah. you guys, Tyler, everyone, modern 5A. But it's like we all had influences, too. Oh, yeah. Those and pure 5A videos were incredible. Mm -hmm. One year for Yo-Yo Factory, when we did 5A May, I think it was, we did the top 10 most influential 5A freestyles of all time. And the number one freestyle we did was Pond from Japanese Nationals that one year he won, <laughs> yeah, 2005. Because yeah, yeah. that was just like, he. it was choreographed. The tricks were incredible for the time. It was like fast as hell. It was like almost as fast as Mickey Yo-Yo's. 
he was like obviously like going in. We need to watch that freestyle again because that shit that would get me hyped as fuck, yo. Yeah, like, that shit is it. It goes in like that freestyle is and the song too. The yeah. <laughs> I haven't Yo, seen that one. That shit so goes long. in. It's good. Sorry to me. Yeah. No, I haven't seen it in so long. I gotta rewatch fire, it. Fire. <laughs> and he just like you could tell he's going so fast. There would be mad times when like he would be doing ripcord tricks where like you know you double loop the counter right over the yo yo and then like do like a tense tension trick and like undo one of the rip cords with like the counterweight or something right. you know? but like you do that and try to maintain the tension throughout the swing so you don't fuck up like your uh the momentum of the yo-yo yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. i mean so you keep the trick going clean his shit would just be like bouncing all over the place and he was just so focused he didn't care he was just like getting through the trick no matter what he would yeah. be yerking it all over the place like he was going in yo like he was so focused like and I think Buko did like the same freestyle she did at Worlds and she got second. So it's like, yo, if, she, wow. if he did that at Worlds, he would have been world champion that year without a doubt. Like, because he, that was at the time when if you did more tricks quicker, like you were just outscoring the other person. And like, mm -hmm. he definitely did way more tricks. Damn. Go Pon. I love, yeah, he rocks, dude. Yeah. I still love man. seeing his tricks pop up on my feed on it. I'm so glad he's still yo yo's. Yeah. He's got some cool yo yo's too. He has a cool looking uh, yo yo with whatever yo yo recreation, maybe. Turning point, I think. Maybe. Turning point, yeah. Yeah, he does. He has, like, uh, caps and stuff. It's a cool look. Yeah. He was like a big recess collector for a long time. He collected like every nice. single, like the first year at Worlds when I was in Japan, he came and bought one of everything. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Wow. <laughs> Childhood hero, <laughs> like coming and buying all my shit. Thank you so much. He rocks, dude. Yeah, dude. He's the man. But that freestyle was incredible. Buko was incredible. There was there's a lot of good five A players now. Like it's kind of slowly making a comeback. But it's like yeah, back in the day, like that was that's why it was so easy for us to kind of like maintain the. Like, it's funny because like we almost like we were great, but like it was almost a step down from where they were. When you know yeah. what I mean, like because there were less of us, you know, and like we pushed the tricks a little bit. Yeah, for sure. No, we definitely did. But, but like, performance wise, I mean, those guys are on another level. I think. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, just and just what characters they were, and like way more influential in my opinion, because like right. Well, it's earlier though. So it is, yeah. So it's more. It's hard to work. say. It's building blocks, yeah. But always the very first will be like the most, most like fucking Steve inventing 5A in the first. Right. That's like the pillar. And then it's all down from there. Yeah. But it does go down like that kind of. Yeah. You know, now we're down. Not all. We're, it's ups and downs. It's but. yeah. It's like I would say more plateaued than dropped because it's yeah. just like instead of continuing to progress, it's just like flatlined you know what I mean? it really has not in a bad way like john no. everyone who plays 5a now is pushing it yeah like it's not uh, we can't shit on 5a like i've, no, I've made sure to try to preface it in that way just saying that like oh, everyone yeah. who's playing like jared john everyone is do jared marcus Absolutely. john wolf who else it's just there's less people right, playing yeah. so there's less like in, in there's less energy oh and yeah. Ekblad. owen's um, incredible yeah so like that other white kid it's that looks just like sort of, I think they would agree it's gotten a little like hard to be excited about. Yeah, exactly. It's and it's not nothing against their tricks. It's just no. that there's not like enough action in the scene to like keep it really moving at a steady rate. Yeah. And so it just needs a little kick in the butt and then it'll it'll happen, dude. Yeah. There's so much out there with 5A. I'm super proud that John's been able to also progress as much of a 1A play as Dude, a 1A player as every he time is a 5A he posts, player. he's posted a bunch recently. Yeah. 1A. And it's unbelievable. I need to go out there and like go on a thrifting trip with him just because the thrift in his area is outrageous. Yeah. Like because it's like none of it's really from his area. Like not a lot of people live there, so it's all from shit from out of town. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like oh, their donations from other like Pittsburgh and like places people have money and like they it, locally they like, get a lot of stuff too but like it's just and everything there is just old as fuck but yeah John's like the area is like wild that he lives in um who else from back in the day was a very influential 5A player Dana was obviously incredible Dana I feel like was just back in the day people used to like 
be healthy and tap out of yo-yo when things got busy in life. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, all right, I'm like 24. Like I got a full-time job. Like I graduated college. Like I'll come to a contest if it's in my town or whatever, but I'm not right. going to like post on the forum and like be making new videos all the time and running meets. And blah, no, blah, he blah, tapped blah. out for sure. Yeah. But good for him. I met someone one time, I think, fuck, where was I? I forget. But, uh, just randomly somewhere. And they were like, Oh, like, do you know, da I heard you say you yo-yo or I saw you yo like, do you know Dana Bennett? And I was like, ah, uh, yeah. Like he's one of my best friends. Like I'm a world champion. He was world champion the year before me. And they're like, Oh my God, I was going to tell you that, that he's a world champion. Like, that's, that's so cool. Yeah. I forget where this was, but like, that was such a distinct moment. And I like emailed him about it. And then he was like, Oh, that's so cool. I'm like uh -huh. teaching abroad in Spain right now. And I sent him a bunch of yo-yo factory. Yo -yos. Nice. Yeah. He was technically on yo-yo factory. Yeah, he was. A time when they would just adopt anyone that wanted yep. to be a yo-yo factory player <laughs> who else back in the day good good influential 5a player from back in the day mm. danny was really good i wish that there's more footage of danny I playing know, 5a because yeah. it's all in my memory i don't <laughs> remember or there's no like footage no yeah that one delaware 5a video right yeah that one was really good yeah yeah i wish i had that somewhere saved because it's somewhere on YouTube. Like someone uploaded it and the quality isn't great and the music isn't the same, but. Oh, um, worth a mention is Johnny Del Valle's Lion oh, right, Flow. Yes. He did this video under a moniker, Lionel Flow, F L O. And it was called Lion Flow. And it was just, it was 1A tricks mostly, but it was clearly Johnny, but it was head cut off. And he was wearing long sleeves so you couldn't see his giant muscles. <laughs> he was wearing like a hoodie. So he does these crazy, I remember it's with a clear hitman, no caps. And Johnny Del Valle posts it like, this is my friend Lionel. I just wanted, he wanted to film some tricks. So I filmed some tricks with him. And he does these crazy 1A tricks. And then at the end, he does a 5A trick. And it's like just the birth of tech 5a it's so funny you want to call tech if he 5A. posted it thinking about like oh like this is my friend line well, at least it's like when so funny when chase and was I, doing the fake personality thing you like made a fake profile to do it right. it's like johnny just like oh it like, was like and he like the cute, one though it was like a cute little publicity so it was really cool but the one Johnny's is so like, obviously I'm him so like, obviously. the 5a could be something else you know what i mean that he does the you know when Johnny does a trapeze, he'll slide it to the right. Room. The I slide, still copy yeah. that. It goes underneath his non throw it makes handle it a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. It just looks like all right. Here I go. I'm gonna do a trick. I think he stole that from Jason Lee. Probably. Yeah. I do that to this day because of them. Just sometimes I just think it looks cool. But he does that in every trick, so it's so very clearly Johnny. But this five A trick is insane. Like. It all oh, fits yeah, the into this small thing, yeah. space, like, and he just like does a thing, and it's all very technical. And that's like John Rob has said that that was hugely influential on him, and then John Rob and that video were hugely influential on me, and then and that's where like more of that counterweight based five A came from for sure. It's so. such a bizarre video to reference, it's, like, because we all watched it back in the day, but it's like I remember John Rob telling John us Rob that. really like and being onto like, it. what? Yeah. Like that was such a like. Why would you watch that video out of all of his other videos that are all yeah. really good that have like cool it's music the only and one stuff? Five A. Because it's like all the other videos. I didn't even like Eminem, but it's like at least when you watch a buff random ass white dude doing anything, yeah. If Eminem is the soundtrack. It's like this makes sense. Like, <laughs> I'm not like vibing to it but i'm like eh, like this fits i guess like um but yeah in that video he used like a dj shadow song or whatever yep. so it's like Dinger, organ donor or yeah so it's like kind of artsy in a way and it's like cool the whole black backdrop and it's not all of his other videos look like weird industrial shit yeah <laughs> nine inch nails minus the nine inch nails yeah who else who else good influential 5a player from back in the day I'm trying to think like who would get second and third and fourth and fifth place at some of these. Contests. I know I can't remember. Can't Augie remember. had a good few years in five A. That Augie like, did have. That's weird, but he did have really good. Five A would be one of those divisions where like, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, he it would have like, not. I don't want to call Augie and Curdy and players like that a B tier player or Paulo Bueno a few years ago before like you got back into yo-yoing. Yeah, where like if you learn. 
10 5A tricks that are pretty good, you can do a two, three minute freestyle and place. You know what I mean? And if you learn like some longer one, like if you learn back in the day, it could be like electric fan or a uh, tangler or something like that would kind of. Seth Peterson. Seth. That's a good 5A yeah. guy. Miguel wasn't placing at that time, but Miguel was hugely influential on me. Miguel was probably. Well, listen to this. Sorry. Yeah, read, no, no. Read out. 2004 yeah. World Yo-Yo Contest 5A. So we got Makoto in first, Rafael in second, and Shingo in third. Yeah. Totally Already. Good. We talked about those guys. Great. Andrew Lin, fourth. Okay. Uh, Hiri, Hiriyasu Ishihara. That's. Fifth. That's Pond. Yeah, it's right? Pond, yes. Subasa Onishi in six. I remember that. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember that, but I remember people telling me about that. Like he used to be not very you know. close. He was within four points of winning. Of winning the whole. Oh wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was looking at um, a different number here. That's funny. No, no, but no. he was within one point of Pan, and then Bakoto was way out in the front with a 97, 97.6. Yeah. But um, Jack Rinka then in seventh. Seth Peterson in eighth. That was a great Seth freestyle. Mm -hmm. He used like emo music and it was like he got on Duncan afterwards. Nate Sutter, Maya Nakamura, Buko, Matt Schmidt. Those are all Matt people Schmidt that didn't sick, final. Um, they didn't final, yeah. yeah. Matt Schmidt. Damn, Matt Schmidt. Tommy, Sebastian Brock, Miguel Correa way down there. Yeah. Dana, Dan Bennett, it says. Dan Dana Bennett. Bennett. That's funny. Jake Maloney, Brad Forshinger. Got zero points from Australia, Brad. All right. Poor Brad. Poor Brad. Um, but yeah, a couple in there. Nate Sutter is a good one for yeah, sure. Nate Sutter's sick. Matt Schmidt was very influential to me when I was a kid too. Yeah, I don't know was. if you ever he saw him. He was always videos. showed up in clip videos. Yeah, he was in uh, a lot of those Doc College for the Easily Amused videos from back in the day. Mm-hmm. Let's just for fun check out. I love that every World Yo Yo Contest website is still, still online. Up. So you can see God, all the I wonder points. who's paying for that. It's got to be Greg. Right? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. It's probably all hosted to the same place. So that was the year Buko won. Makoto got second. Buko was way out in front again by all, by 10 points. Yeah. People used to win by a huge margin. Andrew Lynn in third. Because the the performance category would be so subjective that basically it'd be like, oh, this person's out and ahead way better than the other people. Check and, this you know. out. This is a cool moment for Andrew, though. Andrew Lynn in third with 81.6 points and Raphael in fourth with 81.3. 0.3 points. Damn. Andrew got that podium finish. I'm really happy he did. And that was the last year he ever competed. <laughs> yeah, it was. AJ Kirk in fifth. The first time an American ever got top five in 5A at Worlds. That's so wild to me. Americans used insane? to be so shit at competing. But they right still behind him, are, but... one point, one point three points away, Dana, Dana Bennett. Bennett. I forget I his freestyle from that year, I but it was good. I don't remember. I don't know if I've ever seen it. I definitely watched it. He's wearing a purple buzz on shirt. Okay. He like drops a yo-yo and the ring pops out and rolls oh off my the God. stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's but because, hilarious. Because like for the first, I, someone told me this years later, I never noticed it. The first 90 seconds, he goes perfect. Like he does not miss a trick and then he yeah. drops the yo-yo and even the drop isn't that crazy. It would have been like negative one or whatever, but then the ring pops out and it goes down the stage. And I think he, you know how the buzz on players would normally only have one or two good yo-yos. They get to switch to like his shit yo-yo afterwards. And then he just went all downhill and it was like, God damn it. Like, damn bro. That's crazy. Yeah. Pretty cool spin top competition. Dave Bazan. Dave Bazan with a 99.2. He went clean as hell. You don't get any negatives in spin top. Oh, uh, I mean, not that that matters. Like if you, if every judge has you in first place, you're just going to get a hundred after the normalized yeah. score anyway. But John Gates, he's a cashy in third. Love that. Have I ever told you the story about John Gates when he did a dab at uh, no. this yo-yo player in Denver manages like a chain of dispensaries and uh, his family owns like a jewelry shop. He's balling as hell. But uh, he, uh, he like loves to dab yo-yo players out just like to uncomfortable degrees. And uh Is that the guy that owns reticulated return time? No. no. Okay. He also dabs people out, but this is a different yo-yo player. This guy is like way into the marijuana industry. But uh 
He like had us all over his crib. We're all like sitting there chilling, smoking, yo-yoing. We're there for like hours. And John Gates comes over and he brings a bunch of old yo-yo gems for us to play with. And we're nice. all, that's who we should interview one time. That would yes. be a sick one. Um, write that down. Yeah. <laughs> Here, text me about that so we don't forget. Yeah. So John does a dab, right? And like Tucker would do these things. His name is Tucker. He doesn't care. Um, he would do what's called a ninja dab where like someone's there, like they're hitting the rig and like they're sucking down a dab. And then you come up behind you over your shoulder and put a dab that's like three times the size of the dab you just took in the nail at the same time. And like, of course, you cough or whatever and you're going crazy. But like you're who's going to turn down a bunch of free drugs. You're just like, yeah. and then suck down the rest of it. John did that and he was just like on another planet. He instantly went to sleep. Like he goes and lays down on the couch, goes to sleep. And we're all like just sitting at a table, like still dabbing, talking about yo-yo shit, occasionally standing up or whatever. And like two or three hours goes by and John's just like asleep. He's like maybe in his mid 40s at this point, like maybe late 40s or something. Um, and then all of a sudden he just goes up, he just sits up and he had like the leg thing kicked out, like the leg rest kicked out and he sits up and you know how, like when they close really loud, everyone audibly hears and it's like, and he's like, I'm going to fucking throw up. And like, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was crazy. He literally, uh, puked. Yeah, he pro like someone luckily got the trash can in time, but he like project or no, I don't think they did. Actually, I think he may have like vomited on the floor quite a bit, but he like projectile vomited across the room. And it Damn. was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the shit will sneak up on you. I don't blame him. Oh, yeah. Barold, I wish that you were a nice kid so I could pet you, but you're very rough. Very rough guy. You're a rough kitty. I'll come around. Why is this? Oh, come here, Bubba. That was a good, uh, good pool going through that list. Yeah, that was fun. I think uh, that will probably do it for this episode. Yeah, it's a good, good cut off. But that was fun. Yeah, we talked about a lot of stuff.
We recording? <laughs> yeah, we're rolling. I'm sorry to join me to tell you. Should I have consented no. to letting you record? No. No, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when you sneak up on me unannounced and just start recording, Tyler. <laughs> yeah. The thing with ball golf is if you want to play the best course in the world or the country, you can't, you get, can't in. get in. Can't. It, you just never will. You can't. And you never fucking will because you have to know someone or you have to be make a certain amount of money. Or you got to eat a baby in front of Bill yeah, Clinton. Yeah, like you no fresh dough anymore. It's just it's really gone downhill, unfortunately. But. Yeah, it's a lot harder to put swastikas on the pizza when they're <laughs> frozen. Um, Out what of do you, pepperonis. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. do you think about or green peppers if you're vegan? Whatever yeah. kind of swastika you want to make, we don't discriminate. Right. Yeah, I meant I drive by Dutch that's Wonderland. Where Dutch Wonderland yeah. is Lancaster. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, there was one near our house near where I live now and it's still there and it's the hut shaped building, but they are takeout only. You can no longer sit in them. It's an abortion clinic. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Take out. (laughs) out. Sorry. 